My name is Gretchen Wagner and I am a curatorial assistant in the Department of Prints and Illustrated Books here at the museum and I became involved um, with the Women's Inif Initiative Project um, by writing an essay, contributing an essay to the catalog of the collect works in the collection. A zine is a um, is a sort of constantly evolving form. Zine is actually a word that comes from magazine, short in the last part of the word magazine. And it really was a form that grew out, it has a diverse background, it comes, um, grows out of politics, journalism, literature, music, um, and the visual arts. But zine as we know it is certainly something that's really developed in the you know, the post-war years when popular culture um, really sprang into life, just, you know, um, hundreds and hundreds of uh, mass-produced publications were out there and there was a desire to respond to that. And on top of that, the development of, um, of affordable and accessible printing processes such as the mimeograph, the ditto machine, and the photocopy, and, the, and Xerox, is when it really sprang to life and gave a voice to um, artists, musicians, writers who wanted to put their thoughts out there. And then artists spe specifically who maybe wanted to circumvent um, the traditional art establishment of galleries and museums, and also artists, um, particular conceptual artists, who were beginning to turn away from objects and towards ideas. Ideas. This became an outlet that um, um, really gave a place for voices that were lesser heard and oftentimes women who didn't have a place in more traditional um, art establishments or literary establishments or music establishments. What they would um, be able to speak about was often much more themes that were much more provocative than they might have been able to address otherwise. One of the reasons that I really um, felt it was important to include this material in a compendium of, of um, research and essays and writings about women in MoMA's collection was that um, there was this very distinct point in feminism that took place in the very early 1990s. And that was that this sort of second generation of women came into being. And that was a group of younger women who had, you know, witnessed their mothers going through sort of the 70s and the initial phases of, of feminism and the protests and this discussion of, um, you know, sort of economic position of women and, and women's rights. And then that happened, and then there was almost like, a, there was perceived to be a conservative backlash in the 80s. And then the 90s came, and there was this inundation of media um, that was, again, producing these very um, um, gendered stereotypes, so that they were seeing this and question and just inundated MTV, everything, you know, telling them this is the type of woman you should be, which was countering what they thought their mothers had fought for. And so all of a sudden, it became the so-called second generation of, of women say, of asking the same questions that their mothers were, but then adding this cultural aspect into it. And so Riot Girl, which was a movement that kind of really sprung out of a select group of women that were active in the Pacific Northwest, who not only saw that they could make their own media through art and music, began many bands, along with their zines, one named Bikini Kill, um, Girl Germs, Riot Girl. And this was their own sort of media to counter the mass-produced media. I really tend to gravitate towards the Riot Girl because of their really punk aesthetic, but also I find fascinating that what sort of the vocabularies that they put use to put to use in their zine and printed matter also had manifestations on stage with their their shows that they do as bands, and I really am interested in that interface. For instance, you know, one of the things was that they were very much um, involved in was this idea of trying to take a feminist stance or change ideas about female identity um, and take that conversation out of the academic mode and bring it down into a more vernacular and sort of rough and tumble to further along the dialogue and, and, and bring about um, you know, changes and empowerment for women.